Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, from ultra thin dress watches to solar powered statement pieces and everything in between, movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's M-V-M-T. Dot com. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Were you saying that I always count up and you guys always count down? Yeah, Is I that was, what? So I, was I just did it again without it. even. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just did it again without even thinking about it. Everybody. Welcome back to the Potted Together podcast. My name is Becca, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Adam and Nicole. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hello, hello, hello. 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 <laughs> hello, everybody. Happy Monday to all of our listeners, all of our lovely people. Um, we are going to be talking about propagation tips and tricks. What to do when you want to propagate, how to propagate, why propagate. Uh, just all the propagating things, if you will. So first we're going to do a check-in because the episode that just went live for us last week was the big run-on sentence (laughs) (laughs) of ketchup. And we hope that you guys enjoyed that. We did get some good feedback. Uh, Not too many, this is a plant podcast comments, (laughs) I hope. No. I don't know if we got any, actually. I didn't see any. On um, no. Instagram, everybody loved it on Instagram. <laughs> good. I feel like it's a good palate cleanser, like mid-season. I think that probably was like the mid-season mark yeah. around there. Yeah. Uh, maybe beginning to mid-season mark. So anyway, we just love to chat. We love it. We, we can't get enough of it. So we're going to chat about plants today. We're going to make sure that we stay on track. But first... Um, I want to hear about what's going on in your lives because we haven't recorded in like two weeks. Yeah, because yeah. of me. So, it's been yeah, a minute. Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nicole, how about you start and tell everybody why you're why? setting us back? <laughs> why did I set us back yet again? Well, let's see. Okay, so the kitchen remodel started last week, and it's super exciting, but it's super loud. So I knew. Well, okay. It was demo day last Thursday. We could record on Thursdays. And I just Mm -hmm. had a feeling that that wasn't going to happen. I was thinking about going to Jay's studio to do the recording, but, you know, then I'd have to drive to the city and, like, set up a whole thing and, like, lug my mic and all that. And I was like, you know, Becca and Adam, they'll understand. Like, She's a suburbanite now, folks. I know. (laughs) Yeah, she is. I know. Did I just say drive into the city? (laughs) Yeah. Who is she? As a bad thing? I know. Uh Oh. (laughs) I know. It's a terrible thing. I have a wedding tomorrow in the city, and I'm low-key dreading it. But not dreading it because I don't want to shoot the wedding, but dreading driving into the city. Like, I had to get a Spot Hero parking pass, which I'm going to talk about for a second. Spot Hero Mm -hmm. in the city is quite freaking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't I know about this before? I don't know about a lot of things until like it's really late in the game. This is something I'm noticing about men. But I don't (laughs) know. I love you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know this song. (laughs) Uh, Anywho, Spot Hero. So yeah, I had to. I did a Spot Hero parking spot. I don't know. I just can't be bothered with the city lately. It's just not something that. I want to be bothered with but yeah so I decided not to and you know I knew that you guys would be understanding so we just decided to push it off but it was so unbelievably loud if you've never heard someone jackhammer 
granite countertops Ooh. yeah you don't you're not missing much so but it's, yeah. it's looking beautiful and it's going really fast like they already have all the cabinets up which i'm a little shook by and the countertop's going to get measured soon so it's all just coming along but that's pretty much what i've been up to mm-hmm. all week is trying to navigate that and like back to school because school started on monday and just like i don't know sticking with my schedule with editing for um the still life and then you know pot or not pot it together but my clean leaves like there's just a lot going on this week and i'm feeling quite overwhelmed but today yeah. they're not here so we're good <laughs> Today they're not here. I love your kitchen. It looks so good. I'm really excited to see that corner sink situation. Yeah. That is like a dream home item that I'm going to write down and be like, corner sink with the windows. Yeah, it has to happen. A lot of plants can fit back there too. You know, like you can can fit quite a bit of plants. Like when I think about the corner sink kitchen situation, I think of Amanda Ray Wright and I think of how her kitchen is just absolute goals. Yeah. So when we toured this house, I was like, yeah, yeah, it's a small kitchen. It's an, it's going to be an adjustment, like, you know, between me and my mom going through all of our things. Luckily, we're the only ones that cook. The guys don't really do a lot of cooking, which is a good thing when you have a small kitchen. Thanks, patriarchy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um but yeah so that window was like ooh, you could see the whole yard from there you know so yeah it really is a beautiful window i think the the thing that i need to know and what our listeners probably need to know is what handle you chose for the pantries because i have a very strong (laughs) opinion about this do you (laughs) oh like the tall ones or the short ones wait so i didn't look through what you guys answered oh so i'm curious now to know okay so i chose the big ones because that's what i went with okay okay me too we all three are in agreement here okay okay good um but i think it was like here i'll look it up really quickly we like the big ones i just feel like you gotta go with like the big statement Handles. Yeah, yeah. Plus, like everyone's going to be going to those. Like those are the ca- those are probably going to be your most used ones. And if you have that little handle, I just feel like they'll just be like a bigger, like a smaller area for like griminess to show. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then like you're always grabbing the same spot because there's no other option. Right, but then also the cabinet's so big that I feel like it would be more wear and tear on it if we went with the shorter handles but 306 people voted for big 147 voted for short so i'm pretty sure we're going with the big ones my mom didn't care uh ted said small and jay said big and i was like listen buddy you're kind of outnumbered here okay (laughs) so i'm pretty sure we're gonna go with the big ones um but yeah very excited about that do you like the hardware oh yeah i do Mm -hmm. yeah love it I, I was really, really wanting to do gold, but I couldn't sell my mom on gold. Um, and we really like our faucet and it's black and stainless and like all of our appliances mm-hmm. are black. So I was like, okay, we'll go with the black, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, other things that I feel like we need to talk about about your week, Nicole, is uh, I think I think we saw that Thai Constellation video. Um, Did you? <laughs> Did you see the Thai wow. Constellation video yet, Becca? I mean, just the um, thumbnail just will show you. <laughs> hold on. I haven't been watching YouTube because I've been like enthralled oh, with you, ebooks right now. You didn't oh, miss anything. Okay. The tea. Listen, hold on. I'll tell you the tea. Okay. Have Here's you, the tea. Have you been enthralled with Love Island on Paramount Plus? Was it on there? Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay. I've been watching that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, my tie got. Th- the rips. Ah, no. Look okay. at those leaves. Black. Oh. <laughs> okay, hold on. Love Island, yes, I have been watching. Thank you. I was going to thank you again for giving oh, me no, access that's... to your Paramount <laughs> Plus. <laughs> I haven't finished it yet, but I have been watching. <laughs> yeah. Um. Really quick about Love Island. I don't watch it, but Jay's shooting one of the people that's on the show, like in his studio, like he's photographing one of the people, one of the girls. She recently left though. I don't, I can't remember her name. I'll have to ask him her name. What does she look like? Mm, I don't know. Cause I don't. The determination on Becca's face right now. I wish you all could see it. 
like, uh, who is that? Who is What's that? her name? Yeah, I'm not um, sure because I really like bad wife here, but I really don't look at it like I don't look at his work often. <laughs> I, that's okay i can't i can't remember who it was but i'll find out and i'll, I'll tell you okay send him a text <laughs> i need to know do right it now, now. <laughs> <laughs> you think i'm kidding <laughs> okay i'm just i'm kidding but i'm texting <laughs> what's the name of the girl i feel like the this season of love island I'm not going to, no spoilers, because I don't know how it ends, and neither of you are watching it, but if, if there's anybody out there who is watching it, this season of Love Island was the, and this was my first time watching US Love Island, I've only ever watched Australia Love Island, um, but like, it was very girl power season, like, the girls were going after, the, like, some of the girls were going after the same guy, but they were still very like, I respect you so much. We're friends. Like they were very much so like, you know, on The Bachelor, how there's girls that are like, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here for him, which more or less like I totally respect them. I'm not saying that's a bad mindset, but these girls were very like, we're girlfriends. And also we're going after the same guy, but we're still friends. So I don't know. It was very like girl empower girl. Yeah, yeah. I loved that aspect of this season, but Okay. Moving on, back to the subject. Back to the Thai constellation. Okay, here's the tea. It died. All the leaves <gasps> turned black. I don't know what the hell happened, but I got a lot of comments saying Thrip wouldn't do that or Thrips wouldn't do that. Is it Thrip or Thrips? It's Thrips. And I Thrips. I have made that mistake before, and you better believe someone had. And <laughs> Thrips is spelled Thrips singular and plural and i was as i was watching your video i was like oh my gosh she's gonna get this comment i know because you kept saying thrip <laughs> oh like, okay oh yeah. <laughs> whatever Uh-oh. anyway just add a fucking s okay excuse me <laughs> so so yeah i got th- it got thrips but also the leaves turn black so people were saying that most of the time their leaves turned yellow which they did they started turning yellow but they went from literally like yellow to completely black like it looked like they got fried in the oven like that's what it looked like it It didn't even look like it looked like heat or cold damage for sure yeah it didn't look like sunburn because sunburn it would have like kind of turned them white i would think because that's happened to Mm -hmm. my monstera before it was just so random so i don't and it, it i don't know i don't know what happened but I noticed it happening. My mom's like, that plant looks like it's turning, like it's dying. And I was like, yeah, I think it has thrips. And then I looked at it and I was like, yeah, it definitely does. Like I saw them all over the stems and I was like, there's no way, like, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to deal with this, you know? Was it close to your other plants? It was, it was on the top shelf. So where it was when you were here and yeah, it was right next to my, um, my obtusifolia, my peperomia obtusifolia, which that looks fine, but they were so microscopic. They were like white little sticks. Mm-hmm. Like little so cigars. Yeah. So I didn't see any flying, but I don't know if I would have seen them flying. I don't know. I don't even want to think about it. It gives me anxiety, but I checked all my other plants. I didn't see anything. So. Oh my god! I made the decision to just, just take it down to like wet sticks so i literally cut all the leaves off it had four big leaves i cut them all off and that was it (laughs) if the leaves still looked okay obviously i wouldn't have done that but they were not coming back from that they were all literally black like yeah yeah it was like done it was bad (sighs) and it was quick is that Koopy in the I'm background? Sorry, no, is you're that fine. So annoying. No, it doesn't look like it's picking up on my audio. <laughs> but like, if it is, that's gonna be so annoying. No, it's okay. I just because uh, if it's if it's there, it's there. It'll just be quiet. No biggie. <laughs> yeah, I don't see any like spikes coming up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Koopies. <laughs> Oh, jeez, Nicole. are honestly, so... like, they're just, I don't know. If there's a scale on the worst pest to have, I just feel like that would be towards the top. Well, of yeah. course I got them because I was talking about how I've never had them. 
very no, recently. Yeah. So of course, of course that would happen. But I remember when you were here, you looked at the little one, my little wet stick one. You're like, I think that this has thrips. And I was like, what? That's what I was going to say. Like, I was like, didn't Adam say that? Yeah, you totally uh-huh. did. And then, so I sprayed it with neem, with, well, it's not really neem oil, like pure neem oil. It's like this neem. Neem spray. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. I used to use that you too. Yeah. Okay. So I sprayed it with that, like shortly after you left i sprayed it and put it um by the sink kept it by the sink like away from other plants and then i didn't see anything going on with it it put out it was like putting out a new growth point literally within Mm -hmm. like a couple of days the growth point i noticed on that that's what turned is daniel home oh yeah he just got home scared me i was like get a knife (laughs) <laughs> your face was like <laughs> Grab an who could it be lassie <laughs> <laughs> okay continue um so the the new growth turned black like before the leaf even unraveled and i was like this either has a bacterial infection root rot something's going on but it's in lecca so i checked it for root rot and there really wasn't any like there was just a couple little stragglers on the older roots which that happens in lecca all the time didn't think anything of it And then, like, literally a couple days later, the leaves just started, from the stem, just started, like, blackening out from there. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. It was weird that it turned so black. Like, I even saw that new leaf on your tie that was, like, pure black because it was still rolled up. But I don't know. I used that neem spray that you were using in the video, and I had it, uh, I sprayed a couple of my plants a long time ago and it did actually like start turning leaves a little black so i wonder if it's something to do with that spray as well maybe. i don't know maybe thrips though i've gotten lots of comments uh but a lot of people said they can't fully rid them their collection of thrips until they use a systemic because i think thrips burrow into the plant tissue and lay their eggs inside so like mm. You don't see the eggs until yeah. they're crawling out. Gross. So like a topical solution is not going to work. It'll kill it the adults, to... but then, right. you know, then you're going to have some more. It's like the mealies laying their eggs in the, in the soil. You got to get them when they're larva. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people talk about root, root mealies. Yeah, I've had them. And... In Lekka? No. I just never, I just like, was like, I never understood what root millies were. And it seems like it's a, I don't know, maybe the more and more people who are getting into plant collecting, the more and more we're seeing like a a diversity or like hearing about a diversity of pests because like root millies, I just never even knew were a thing until recently. Yeah, I had them on, oh... Now I can't remember. It might have been my Crimson Queen in soil. Um, but they don't look like they're different than than the mealies that are on the leaves. They're, it looks like the same kind of mealy. It's just they're feeding off of the roots instead of the leaves. Yeah. yeah. Brody. Yeah. Ugh, they're like, it's like when uh, like viruses mutate. It's like the, the pests are mutating. Ugh. Yeah. The worst. Isn't that what happens though? I think that is true because certain pests will become like I remember Jeff telling me this. Uh, he's a nursery owner here that they'll, they'll like get used to a certain pesticide and like overcome it. Yeah. Maybe that's what they they always say that. Well, Gretchen Greenhouse Girl ninety four always said that you have to follow the instructions as far as like how much to mix because if you do mm-hmm. more, that's they can evolve and get more used to it and then it's not going to work which i was like that's wild yeah that is wild so gross yeah Yeah. i'm over it so i've officially had everything now known to man Mm. i'm just mad i'm not gonna vocalize anything that i haven't had yeah because i know that i'll get it i shouldn't have said that either shit but like <laughs> I'm just upset that it happened to my tie. Like that was my pride and joy. Like it lit like I literally felt heart palpitations as I was cutting those leaves off. And then I mm-hmm. felt anxiety over all the comments I would get following the video. And I almost didn't put it out. 
because I was just like, people are just going to criticize me and tell me I shouldn't have done this. And not one person did. So that just goes to show, Mm -hmm. don't get caught up in your own thoughts. Just, you know, just do it. Yeah. And also a good example of how to react when somebody shares something real online because people get so mad that creators are like fake or not showing their real life but then when they do it's they're met with criticism so like why would somebody want to share like a real moment yeah that's how people act you know yeah Yeah, it's like normalizing pests like that's probably why we didn't know half of the pests existed that do because we never saw people talking about them right the daryl from houseplant journal the other day made an instagram post that i really thought was nice um and I'll just give you like a quick rundown now. But it, the the description said, if you want to sustain your interest in caring for plants and feel less guilt, try being less extreme. And then there was pictures on it. And one is plant parent confessions. I don't actually kill house plants. I just lose interest in caring for inconsistently uh, yellowing slash browning leaves. And then another mm-hmm. one was... I don't actually kill kill house plants. I just prioritize my sanity over trying to eradicate thrips, which, yes, it's so bad. Yeah. And then the last one I, he put on there was, I don't actually kill house plants. I just thought low light meant they could live in a windowless corner. <laughs> but basically, he's just saying, like, don't be extreme yeah. and say, like, I'm killing, I kill, I kill. Just be like, yeah. you know, be honest right. with yourself. Because right. I feel that, too, like... Yeah. That's what my week's been like, if we want to transition to my catch-up. Yeah, let's go. Um, I'm I'm still dealing with those mites, and while I, I guess I'm dealing with the treatment of the mites, and they aren't spider mites, and do you guys remember, like, a long time ago, I think we all got messages, because that's when we were, like, texting, like, constantly, but there was somebody who sent a message basically saying, like, I think a lot of houseplant people are dealing with what's called broad mites, but no one's talking about it because no one knows what it's like, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I feel mm. like we all, it felt spammy because it was like this very long like novel and it was copy and pasted to like all of these YouTubers. Hmm. Um, oh. And it had an article. But I don't know. It might be broad mites. I still haven't figured it out. Um, and I know I talk about this a lot and it's probably super annoying, but I guess I, part of me wants to talk mm-hmm. about it a lot because they are so incredibly difficult to see that I just feel like more and more people are probably dealing with these and not knowing that they're existing on their plants. Like, Well, yeah, we need mm-hmm. those glasses that you have. Like, And we honestly, <laughs> those glasses, while they're amazing, like I... I had to buy a stronger magnifying glass because, like, that one, the highest magnification on those glasses was, like, 3X. But, yeah, it's, like, I have to take plants into a dark room with a flashlight and a magnifying glass to see, like, these little orange dots that I can barely see with the magnifying glass. And then I have to take a a little um, toothpick or something pointy and just kind of, like, brush up to it to see if it moves and, like, stare at it like still for like 30 seconds oh my gosh and they're on a lot of my hoya because Jeez. so like researching the mites broad mites uh there's a lot of information about it in regards to like marijuana growers because i think that's like where a lot of our pests like problems start and or like are figured out how to control because there's a lot of marijuana growers which is a plant right that yeah. are just like yeah. dealing with spider mites, dealing with thrips, dealing with these broad mites. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, broad the broad mites scare me because a lot of the things are like you have to cut the plant and disinfect everything. So part of me is hoping it's not that because it appears that broad mites can like burrow into the plant material and just like hide out until I want to mm-hmm. not hide out. So do they eat the like? Are they eating your plants? Like, are you noticing leaves? Yeah drop or they they go after the new growth so what kind of like led me to see that there was an issue that I still didn't know at that time it was those mites but like a lot of my Hoya were pushing out like new growth but then it would die and then like a scabby not a scabby nub but you know how like Hoya f- covers over it's like an injury with like a nub oh yeah i saw your post the other day and i after you posted that with all those little nubs yeah i noticed that on some of my hoya it has the same the same thing going on and i always wondered what that was about so i'm wondering 
Oh, man. She get out the magnifying glass. Yeah, honestly, fl- a flashlight and a magnifying glass. And they do reflect orange, but... Um, so, yeah, I've just literally had a rotation of plants in my shower and my spare shower uh, that every day I'm spraying with a mixture of water, four parts to one part water to rubbing alcohol, and then I added some peppermint Castile soap in there because mm-hmm. all mites are the same as far as, like, treatment, and that's a good treatment. Um, mm-hmm. And it's cheaper than buying gallons of Captain Jack's dead bug brew. Because that yeah. also works really well for mites. So uh, I've just like had alcohol, rubbing alcohol highs like all day, every day. Because I'm just oh. like spraying. Oh my God. Which is the worst. Yeah. It gives you such a terrible headache. Um, so I think Ooh. I'm going to do this for two weeks straight on the ones that I think were most affected. And see see how that goes and then if this continues to happen i'm just gonna buy some beneficials i told steve like i was like we might have to resort to in bringing more bugs into the house to take care of all these so they're reflecting orange yeah yeah i mean if it is broad mites and though if those are affecting like others collections like they just seem like really awful to try to eradicate I love. Yeah, you've been dealing with this for like months, dude. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And I will say, like, I've been pretty lax about the whole treatment since I brought it up. But these last two weeks, I've really, like, been like, okay, everything's secluded. And I'm daily spraying, like, well, soaking. I feel like. I feel like that's kind of how I approached the whole thrips thing. Like, first, it was a denial, obviously. And, like, you pointed it out, but I was like, oh, no. Okay, yeah, well, okay, I'll just address this Adam's later. stupid. <laughs> the stages Stop. of grief for, like, denial, yeah. acceptance. And it's it's crazy that, like, I say that because that's exactly what it was. Like, it went in one ear and right out the other. Like, I didn't want to acknowledge that at all, you know? And then I noticed the plant not doing well. And, of course, right away I'm like, bacterial infection, root rot. Like, it's not thrips. It's not going to be thrips, you know. Um, but it was just like I was at a time in my life where I, we, we had just moved. We were trying to get settled, and I couldn't deal with it. And, you know, the plant ended up dying as a result of that. But, like, I just couldn't deal with it at that moment. So, like, I feel like you you shouldn't be hard on yourself for that because it's just like, yeah, I mean, it, once you recognize you have a pest, it's like, okay, I know it's there. I'll deal with it later, but sometimes later is mm-hmm. too, it's too late. And it's, it's like, whatever, it's just plants. But when it's yeah. on multiple plants like that, it can become so overwhelming. You yeah. Know? In my, oh my gosh, I have a Hoya. I had, I should say past tense. I had a Hoya pu- pubicalix in, on like a three and a half foot trellis. Mm-hmm. The plant was huge. I mean, it was wrapped around the trellis multiple times. Gorgeous. The trellis broke because it was bamboo. <laughs> what? what? Is, does he sound like he's underwater? <laughs> <laughs> you saw me put my AirPod in, right? And knew exactly why I was doing it. <laughs> I think my headphones are dying. <laughs> I wish I could hear this. <laughs> you sound like a robot. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he just started sounding like that. And like I looked up. <laughs> I see Nicole's face like going blank, like confused. And then she like starts to reach for her AirPod to switch the AirPod because maybe she thought her other one was dying. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> so you started laughing and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, was it sorry. that funny? So yeah, sorry, Adam. You it sounded- just sounded like, like, gar- just all garbled up. Like, oh my god! And you're you're being so serious, like talking about something serious, but your voice <laughs> sounded like a voice effect. And I was like, what's going on? Yeah, that's exactly what it. It was like a voice, like a robot voice effect. Oh man! I'm so sorry. I would love. I want you to continue. Okay, I'm so just- it, it was on the trellis. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm kind of upset about this plant. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> no. Yeah, so it was on a three foot bam three and a half foot bamboo trellis. And 
it was before I was water sealing my trellis, so the, it rotted. And then as I was like treating it yesterday, the trellis broke. So I was like, so I had to unwind the whole plant from like untangle the whole thing. And then it was, it did have a lot of those mites in it. And so mm-hmm. I just ended up deciding to just throw it away. I took five cuttings mm-hmm. that I'm going to treat those because it's a lot easier to treat that than like a plant that has six foot vines right yeah and I just I felt so guilty and yesterday was trash day so I knew I had to take it out that day because if I saw it in the trash can I would just be so mad at myself um and then I always go back to people always being like well you should give it to someone but like it had pests like I'm not gonna give somebody something that had pests and I don't want to like for my sanity I can't sit here and and treat this and it's a more common Hoya, so I don't want to be like the person who was like, oh, it's just I can get it anytime, but also I can get it anytime, so. Right, right, yeah. right, for sure. But I did take my cuttings because uh, I love the plant, and it's beautiful, and hopefully these cuttings will be fine. I mean, they all mm-hmm. look healthy and happy, and it's a lot easier, like I said, to treat those five cuttings than it is. Right. That plant, but ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's painful. I mean, normalize making sacrifices yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) it just has to happen sometimes and also like what you said about daryl's like post i saw that too and it made me feel so much better as well and there's this person that i follow on tiktok who does houseplant stuff but also lots of outdoor stuff he's in canada uh his name is andy and he's on tiktok i don't know if you've seen him adam you'd be the only one because nicole's not on tiktok but um Anyway, I'd actually love to have him on the podcast because he's really cool. He has a really cool approach to like caring for plants. Ooh. Just a little something to think about. I need yeah. But he was. Uh, I'll send you one of his posts. Mm-hmm. But like people ask him, you know, thoughtful questions or people ask him questions and he has such thoughtful responses. Like somebody asked, like, how do you overcome the guilt of killing a plant? And he's like, stop personifying your plant so much. Like the plant doesn't know what's happening. Like it's a plant. There's so many of them out there. Like, don't, it's not that deep, you know? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true. Mm -hmm. I mean, as much as like I preach about personifying your plants and having a relationship with him, there's also like a a line where it becomes too much Mm -hmm. and you're losing sleep and like emotional sanity over a plant. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like not that, it's not that serious. It's not worth that. So yeah. Anyway, I'll send you guys some of his videos. Yeah. Cool. I... Because I still do love and care for all of the plants that I have, but like there have been moments in like this past two weeks where I was just like, I need to get rid of ev- like mostly all of these. Like I just need to get rid of them, mm-hmm. and I don't want to do that because like I like, I truly do care for them, um, and yeah, it's just been like an um, emotional roller coaster of just like being mad at myself and then being mad at the plants and then like being yeah. high off of the fumes. It's just like. Phew. I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. Yeah. No, I I feel that. Um, I kind of been feeling the same way because I've been looking at my plants that are outside, and as fall is approaching us, well, it's still like 80 degrees, but it's around <laughs> the corner. I'm I get anxiety this time of the year. I love it, but I also get anxiety because I'm like now I have to bring all these plants inside, and it's a lot of work they did great outside all summer, but it's a lot of work having to bring them in. And I was looking at my plants inside too, like literally just yesterday. And I was like, what can I give away? Like, I, I, I don't know if it's, if that has anything to do with me having to bring all these plants in, or if I'm just like living with other people and I'm not having as much time to care for them or being busy with weddings. I don't know what it is. I can't pinpoint it, but I'm, I'm at that same place. Yeah, It's kind of weird. It's a weird feeling, you know? Oh, man. Well, you know what? For all the people who don't love our ketchups, this is a planty ketchup, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How about you, like Becca? Becca? Riddled with plants. Oh, were you done, um, Adam? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. Like, there's nothing else going on. I have to go get an emissions test today because my sticker expires at the end of August. <laughs> and, you know, I'm procrastinating. Why does adulting suck? Like, Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the, the wildest thing. I don't have to do that in Missouri. 
That's not a thing here. Okay, moving on. So yeah. <laughs> it's the uh, this is the only time in my life it's been a thing where I've lived. I've never like, had really. It. We yeah. have to do that here. Yeah, I know the city of Chicago did, but like we didn't have to in Bloomington. We didn't have to in Nebraska, really? in Lincoln, in Omaha. None of them. Oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah, I was like pretty shook. I, I feel like we've had this conversation on the podcast before, or maybe just us. We I think we did but, once, like a while ago, yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, I just look at some of the vehicles on the roads here, and I'm like, what? Like, how did that even pass an emissions test? <laughs> and Dan was like, what? What do you mean? Like, we don't, what is that? And I'm like, what do you mean, what is that? <laughs> Missouri's contributing it's, to global warming. <laughs> well, I feel like in like smaller, like less densely populated places, it's not that big of a deal if you yeah. don't really think about it. Yeah. And there's more like farm vehicles out here and like it might like somebody might not be able to use their farm vehicle, which would be a really big hit to like a small farmer. So like maybe there's reasons, but I was just like, What? <laughs> I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> They're not looking at how much terrible shit the car is putting into the environment. Yeah. yeah. Oh no but anyway that's but that is, there. it is annoying that having to go do that it is it's like a it's like one of those annoying things you have to do that's just going to take time out of your day that you don't want to do i know yeah yeah and like and if your car doesn't pass you can't drive it so you have to i remember my first car it was a it was a hoopty in all senses of the word <laughs> Um, but it was it was pretty stable for a long time. But my dad was always having to fix something. But there were several times where I was so scared rolling up to the emissions place that it <laughs> wouldn't pass. And I think one time it actually didn't. But then my dad fixed whatever it was and it was fine. But I was like, this is like you either have a car or you don't situation, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But OK, as far as an update, honestly, not much. Like I have been working with a designer, an interior designer um, on my office to like create a space in there to like, I don't know, make it complete because I realized I've lived in this house for a year and it still doesn't feel like it's complete and like done. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I just have to remember also that I'm just like not a person who really cares. Yeah. But I do, but I don't. Like it's just not... I don't know. Like, putting stuff up on the walls has never been, like, the first priority. Like, one of my friends just moved, and she's like, yep. Like, she moved in, like, I don't know, a week ago. She's like, yep, the last thing we have to do is put stuff up on the walls. And I'm like, how are you already at that stage? Like, I'm here a year. I had my decorations in boxes still, and I'm just now getting around to it. But I think that skill of, like, making a home is something that I just don't have yet. I'm working on it, though. But yeah. and it doesn't help that like Daniel does not care either. So we're like, yeah. Too- <laughs> hope, Did you just hear him laugh? I hope the audio caught that. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like two bros living in our house. Hey. <laughs> anyway, um, gosh, what else? Oh, the two, garden. Just two bros. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're roommates, and they were roommates. <laughs> um. Just kidding. We're not roomies. Well, we are, but... Oh, you are. Benefits. Roomies with benefits. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> um, okay, the garden. Let's talk about my garden. Oh, your garden. Garden goals. My garden... I can't say our garden, Daniel, because you didn't do anything. Like, you didn't <laughs> water it when I asked you to. The plants. The plants in the front... He had, he had a concussion. He had a concussion. I did water it. When? After I came home and asked, did you water? You said, oh, well, let's just go do it now. I, because it rained Sunday. So. No. No. Okay. So basically <laughs> I left to visit my family. Oh, I haven't talked about that on the pod. I went and visited my family. It was, wait, have I talked about that on the yeah, pod? Yeah, the last time we recorded. Tuxen. Tuxen. Oh, okay. We recorded while I was there. Sorry. All right. Anyway, I asked Daniel to water my plants. I wasn't very specific. So anyone out there who, like, is leaving your plants with your partner who is plant blind, uh, be way more specific about your needs, about their needs. A detailed note. A detailed note, he says. Okay. Babe, the microphone's probably not picking up your speech. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. So I just said, hey, can you just water the plants in the front and in the garden while I'm gone? And if, you know, anything looks droopy, water it. Wrong. Wrong thing to do. Wrong. The plants outside <laughs> did not get watered. Um, he said it rained, but it still wasn't enough. So anyway, my hydrangeas, the three hydrangea that I had in the front yard, died. <gasps> all dead. Epically dead. Oh. Um... But I'm going to try to revive them next year. I have them in pots. I'm just kind of going to see if I can overwinter them and plant them later. Because I feel like it's like a Fetonia situation. Like, they'll come back. Maybe. We'll see. And then with the actual garden, it was fine. Like, it's sustained. It's, like, like mature enough to where it doesn't need water every day. <sighs> but, yeah, I'm getting so many cucumbers. I'm overwhelmed with cucumbers. I'm getting so many zucchini. I'm like planning on stuffing them in people's mailboxes. Like, just take the <laughs> zucchini, please. Um, I've like cut up and froze zucchini so that I can have something to do with it. There's some in my refrigerator that have gone bad because I just didn't know what to do with them. I, I'm, I'm like overwhelmed with zucchini. I planted four zucchini plants. Plant one, okay? <laughs> Plant one. Well, take in care your, of it very well. In your defense, you were probably doing that in case some didn't take and they just all took and then they all took and i was like oh mercy Wait, oh, okay. i th i think i planted like six cucumbers mm, you need two <laughs> <laughs> um okay and my pumpkins are up then my pumpkins are growing pumpkins which is really cute and fun and i have three watermelon growing and like nine cantaloupes so it was a successful garden year i think especially for starting so late yes yeah. um and now I'm planning on doing some fall crops like carrots and broccoli and kale and stuff like that. So Ooh. that's exciting. That is exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm slowly like adding to it and doing more. And it's just like a little slow process. So, yeah, that's I don't know if there's really anything else that I have to update it out, update about besides that. Oh, the anime show I'm watching because Daniel's sitting right here. I'm remembering. Uh, Nicole, you said Mia, Mia likes anime, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. What's the, what is it called? To your eternity? To your eternity. Eternity? Oh. Okay, there, you okay, Nicole? Oh, my lash in my eye. <laughs> okay. Do you need, do you need a second? I, I think I got it. Sorry. Okay, we're watching this anime called To Your Eternity, and it is ripping my heart out. Wait, where are you and watching like, it on? Well, Crunchyroll? But... It's, I guess that's some anime app. I don't know. Daniel. Crunchyroll? Crunchyroll? Okay, Crunchyroll. But it's also on HBO Max, but it's the English dubbed version. We're watching it in Japanese with subtitles, which I think is better. Yeah. Okay. But, I, the, you know, I'm not going to be a, an, an, an anime elitist because I feel like <laughs> that's an elitist thing to say in the anime community. I don't know. I'm very new. There, there, is, a, there is a, you know, people who Okay, apparently there's a big debate. Um, anyway, it's so good, and if you guys have ever been interested, it's a really good one, but it's really sad. What is sad. it called again? To Your Eternity. And I we watched it, and it's it's like Game of Thrones. Like, it's this, not, not the storyline, but, like, they're just killing characters off. Like, they don't care. And, like, yesterday or two days ago, we were watching it, and I was so upset that I felt like I had to leave the room and weep. Like, I have never, like, seldom have I been affected that much by a show emotionally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so interested in this because um, I, I'm not super into anime. Because I don't know if I've ever watched it. So I really need to know, like, how yeah. you can watch this. Because, like, Miyazaki, Miyazaki, the creator of Ponyo, um, the movie. Oh, Ponyo. There's been a couple other uh -huh. ones. But they're along yeah. that line of, like, an anime type. And yeah. I loved them. Yeah. I have zero interest in it. But I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> tell Mia about it. She'll I'm like gonna, it. I'm going to tell Mia about it. And maybe, like, I'll watch it with her. Yeah. It's not that violent either. Yeah. Like, it's oh, not that care. violent. I don't care about violence. 
Okay. My mouth is watering because you said crunchy roll, and then it just took me back to when we all had sushi. <laughs> sushi. And oh my gosh. Like, I need some sushi. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. It, okay, but it's it's on HBO Max, like the English dubbed version, okay. which is fine. She probably want to watch. She would probably want to watch it in Japanese, though. Like I'm thinking that's probably what she would want to do. Okay. Crunchy roll. I'm just gonna yeah, write down crunchy roll. roll and just roll with it, you know. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for another anime suggestion, the only yeah, you can watch it on Crunchyroll for free, but with ads. Okay. But you can pay. But you can pay and not have ads Is and project that... it onto the TV. Okay, I was gonna say, do you have to cast it? Yeah, you can't cast it with the free version. Oh. Okay. I tried. But it, yeah, it's like Hulu for anime is okay. what Daniel just told me. But the other one that I would suggest, which is on Netflix, is Demon Slayer. Isn't that on Netflix? The Japanese version. Well, I think version. you talked about this one. Or maybe not. It sounds Daniel's familiar. confirming my facts here. That one's really good. Like, that was the first anime I ever watched besides, like, um, Cowboy Bebop? The Last Airbender. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> But you said no, it was really like, you said it was really violent, right? Like they were slicing heads off and stuff. Yeah, Demon Slayer is like pretty violent, but it was so good, and they they had a movie, and oh, it was so good. But okay, anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, excuse me, my throat just made a sound. But that's my only update is I've been watching that, and it's been ripping my heart out. Air quotes. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I guess it was like a burp or something. I don't know. <laughs> That came Think out I of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, tell me later where it's on. <clears throat> okay, Hulu has Demon Slayer. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyway, okay, that's all before... that's going on in my life. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to start the episode, but I wanted to say before you start the episode, I have an update on Love Island girl name, and it okay. is Ellie. <laughs> Thanks for giving me all that information. He does. I guess this he doesn't means know. Nothing listing. to me. Is it this current <laughs> season? There wasn't an Ellie that I'm aware of. Oh, there's multiple seasons. I thought this was a new show. Uh, Ellie on. Brown. She was in uh, season four of the revived series Love Island. Whoa! There's how many oh. seasons are there of this show? She was just born in 1998. Year. Oh, I feel so old. Uh-oh, that's not good. 98? <laughs> How old is this chick? Okay, but no, but also that's only two years younger than me, so uh, I really don't have much to say about that. <laughs> she is 23. So weird. Ew, okay. okay, I had an existential crisis moment yesterday. Last thing I'll say, turning 25 has really, really ruined me because I keep <laughs> having this realization that I am not going to get any younger <laughs> and I'm only going to get older and years are only going to go by faster. And I just really had a terrible day yesterday because I realized all of this Aww. again. Um, <laughs> again. <laughs> like I was like, I'll never be able to be 16 again i'll never be able to like you know like it was a horrible horrible realization and i feel so silly that it you know it's happening to me when i'm 25 but it was just so bad i was like i will only get older yeah. and i hate yeah. that yeah it's bad it's a hard reality to face yeah it's not an easy thing yeah. So on that note, uh, propagation. Yay! <laughs> Let's propagate some dying plants, shall we? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, um, I guess let's just talk about some some propagation tips, like what, how to propagate. Why? Or, no, no. Why would how, we? Right? Like, why would yeah, one propagate? Why would one propagate? What even is propagating? <laughs> Yeah, we, I guess we cool. should start there. <laughs> we should start there. Yeah. Who like, wants to define propagation? Well, let's look up the actual terminology of propagation. Why did I type in prop and propagation station popped up? I swear I wasn't searching that. <laughs> propagation is the breeding of specimens of a plant or animal by natural processes from the parent stock. Wait, so when you have a baby, we can call it propagating? I guess. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. So if you have a baby and you have a C-section, we can call it prop and chop. 
Oh, shit. Oh, also, <laughs> if you have the baby vaginally, they can also chop and <laughs> Yeah, they can. <laughs> Slice and uh, dice. Okay. Slice and that is dice. the one thing that holds me back, really, honestly. <laughs> the thought of ripping anything <laughs> is just. That's what keeps me up at night. Yeah. If, if anybody wanted to know. Uh, no, 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 no. That's oh. what kept me up at night, too. I was not about the whole tearing. Mm-hmm. And then I had a C section. I was like, okay, well, it could be worse. Okay, so propagation <laughs> and plants. <laughs> Adam's like, I don't want to have to edit all this out. Let's move on. No, no, I'm not going to edit it out. It just makes me feel uneasy just thinking about what you guys have to go through. (laughs) No more pee-pee talk. Um, (laughs) Pee-pee. Propagation, to me, I don't know. (laughs) What? Did Daniel hear you say that? I don't know. I'm just laughing at how stupid that was. How, it's just silly. <laughs> like, there's so many times where I say something and I'm like, oh, if I was editing, I would edit that out. <laughs> oh, oh no. I think they're funny. Oh, no, no, funny. no. It's fine. It's, yeah, it's it's authentic. It is us unhinged and yeah. natural. So it should stay in. But, it, you know, you, you're like, oh, that's embarrassing. Let's just clip. All right. Never happened. Never happened. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> okay. 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 Sorry, Adam. You're trying very hard to be serious. Let's see. No, that's no, okay. I would just say my main reason for propagation, uh, aside from sharing, is to just have like an insurance plan for my plants. You know, I want to yeah. make sure that that family lineage stays growing <laughs> if by chance something. But, you know, it's also kind of a catch 22 because I've taken a lot of propagations of some of the plants that I love a lot. And they have also grown into full plants. So now I have like multiple full plants mm. of, of these, which isn't a bad thing, but yeah. Very full family tree. Like your yeah. Obawata splash, you showed one of your propagations and I was like, oh, that's another plant. It's like yeah. double the size of the original plant. <laughs> yeah, it's and big. The, and the cutting that you gave me is like turning into an actual full plant. So. Yeah. There's multiple babies turning well, can't into say adults the same. out there. <laughs> what? Can't, can't say the same. It's alive. It's fine. I just need to put it in soil, I think, and then it'll really take off. Can't say the Is same. Is it still in moss in your cabinet? Yeah. Or on your shelf? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's in the cabbie. Yep. That was very Midwest. Just, yep. Yep. Okay, I so just need to put it in soil. A and moment take of off. transparency here. Uh, I posted that cutting for sale on my Instagram stories and Becca snatched it up and I still have a lot of guilt that I made you pay for that because you know that I don't I don't want you to have to pay for plants and yet like even though you snatched it up I still was like okay yeah it's you know X amount of dollars and I like randomly when I see that plant I'll think of that situation I think this is the four in me and then I just like (laughs) I get flushed, and I was like, I am such an asshole. Like, why did oh I make Oh, my God. For those of you that can't see us, Becca's eyes literally just rolled all the way into the back of her skull. I think about it often. <laughs> Plus, with it not, like, you know, doing the best for you, like, that. I'm like, oh, shit, she just, like, wasted money. I'm not going to lie. There's been a couple no, times no, no. when you've posted plants for sale, and like I already I know your Venmo I've been very tempted to just be like it's mine and Venmo you before you could say anything about it but mm-hmm. then I feel bad I, like I don't want to take that opportunity away from someone else because like you're my friend and I feel like I See, can always buy a cutting from you anytime so yeah this is exactly how I feel like that's how I felt in that moment kind of I was like well I feel kind of bad taking this away from somebody else so I'm gonna pay for it and like I don't feel any type of way about the fact that I paid for it. Like, (laughs) no. Why can't we just support each other? Why can't we support each other in that way, too? I would feel wrong if I was like, oh, it's mine. And then you're like, oh, shoot, I'm going to feel weird if I charge her. But then I'm losing out on this money. Like, that was my thought. I'm like, I'm not doing this so that you'll like, whatever. I want to be fair and square here. I don't (laughs) want any special treatment, you know? (laughs) Well, that, that so, bee better no, no, put no. in the work and grow because I'm just sad that she's not. 
<laughs> it's literally stagnant because of me. Like, I just haven't had the energy to put into it. Like, it's totally happy. It has roots. It's growing into the moss. Like, everything's fine. I just haven't put the energy into potting it. That's literally the only reason that it hasn't done more, I think. But she's stable. She's, she's staying stable. She, That's something about propagation is the plant will just... It'll stay stable, you know, until you give it that nutrients and that growing medium, it'll just chill. Yeah. You know, it might grow a little bit, but it's not going to be like exploding usually. So yeah. I just haven't really been ready. I don't want you to feel bad. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> well, now that it's out in the open and I've actually said what, what's what been going on in my head, I, I'm going to feel better now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. I don't feel any type of way. I look at it. I'm like, oh, I got this from Adam and I like smile. Oh. <laughs> but in your head, I'm like, you ripped me off. <laughs> that mf -er made me pay money for this piece of shit cutting. This stable oh God, ass no. piece of shit. Yeah, no, no way. I don't think that at all. Okay. I feel like I feel like propagating for me lately has been in an attempt to save a plant. <laughs> like if I mm. notice mealies, which I've noticed mealies on a couple other <clears throat> Hoya since I did my last video. Um, I'm thinking of just, you know, chopping them down and starting small, which is another mm. reason to propagate. Like if you're if if your plant gets so big, to where it's just kind of overwhelming. You can always take it down to little baby plants and start over again, which is such a fun thing to do. I mean, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think another reason to propagate is to, number one, like curb the need to keep buying plants. That's a big reason why I propagate. Mm -hmm. And also just to learn how a plant grows to have a deeper understanding of the plant when you see it growing from that very small form uh, you get to watch the roots come out you get to i don't know i feel like it just deepens your understanding of the plant mm -hmm. yeah so methods well first of all propagating plants is not a one-size-fits-all situation mm -hmm. i think that's super important there's lots of videos out there that talk about like oh how to propagate these 15 different plants like what you would do because the way that you propagate pothos is not the same as you would propagate hoya or mm -hmm. philodendron or what maybe actually pothos and philodendron is basically the same but yeah. you know uh aglionema just it depends on the growth habit of the plant so you have to make sure that you know how to propagate the plant so that you're not cutting it as a leaf yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> giving it to somebody oh, or boy. trying to grow it yourself and there's no roots on it there's nothing to grow from so specifically with hoya like i've learned recently that you don't need aerial roots i thought you did um but they just grow and root along the entire stem which i've learned from both of you i did not know that until recently which is embarrassing but we're oh. humble here <laughs> let's Let's talk about embarrassing. Let's talk about transparency for a second. There's a video that may still be in the interwebs of me. It was a propagation video I did. It was probably like the second week I started YouTube. And mm -hmm. a couple of those leaves that I was propagating were nothing but the leaf itself. Oh, Ooh, I'm, I'm, pretty sure, video. I'm pretty sure I took a monstera leaf, like oh, no, just no, no, the no. leaf. And stuck it in water, if I'm not mistaken. And there was there was a couple. Man, did I take that video down? Oh, we gotta, you got just we gotta. Look. I hope you did. <laughs> I, you know, it's real embarrassing. But hey, we start we start somewhere. This is it's all it's all a learning process. But holy right. wow, that was it was bad. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't be don't be ashamed about how you didn't know where Hoya grew roots from, Becca. Don't That's, be ashamed yeah. of that. You're right. You're right. I have to show you guys Leo. He's laying here with his tongue partially out of his mouth. Uh, oh, my, <laughs> oh my gosh. gosh. What Wait, a cute baby. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Very cute. Um, yeah, so that would be my number one tip is before you cut, make sure that you know where to cut and mm -hmm. Google it. Just a quick Google search. You'll probably find, you know, how to propagate aglionema. Some plants will propagate by cutting 
other plants will propagate by division. Just make sure you know right. <laughs> which yeah. it is. Usually any any plant with like a vining tendency is leaves and aerial roots. Plants that come up from the soil all as one and sprout out together, that's division. So right. I don't know, just understanding the anatomy of the plant will help you be successful with your propagation so that you're not wasting the plant material. You know? Oh, it's, so it's, still, it's still up. How to water propagate different types of house plants we should do like a video like reacting to our worst advice online <laughs> oh that one that one is real i'm shocked i don't get hate comments from that video clearly people are not finding me and watching my old stuff i'm not encouraging anybody to do that oh i hope that we yeah. get a flood of comments <laughs> well, okay, the thing is, with this is like we, <laughs> when we started, we knew basically the same amount as people who are commenting on our videos now, like, <laughs> right, you know, and we know less than some of the people who are commenting oh. on our videos. So oh, that's yeah. why it's fun, because there's sure. like a big mixture of knowledge and gosh especially in the beginning i know that i made some pretty ruddy videos like scary i don't think oh. any of us started youtube with like the notion or like we didn't put out there that we knew everything like we were just doing it for fun and yeah, yeah. we just wanted to sh <laughs> exactly and we just mm. wanted to share our love for house plants and build in any way yeah right it's and not about community. like having the exact perfect knowledge every time and that right. goes for any hobby that you're doing. If you feel like you want to be a creator, then just create and don't let that stop you because, you know, we'll exactly. all learn and we'll all grow. And... Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But just don't follow any of my advice that I gave <laughs> from two years it's ago. It's a parody. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's, if you've seen any old videos, no, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> They're not real. <laughs> so not when real. somebody tells me that they've like watched an old video of mine or like, I'm watching one of your old videos, I, I cringe. I'm just like, please, <laughs> yeah. please don't. Uh -uh. Please don't do don't. that, sweetie. Just click off. Look away. <laughs> My hair journey on YouTube has come full circle, though. Because I, I started yes. long, and then it went short, and now we're back. We're back we're to the back. beginning. Now we're back. Are you planning on cutting it at all? No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait until the sides for my mullet cut grow to like my shoulders, and then I'm gonna get an mm -hmm. even cut, and then I'm gonna grow yeah. it out until I can donate it. <gasps> yeah. oh oh so you're gonna be Inspired long hair, me. Adam, for a long time. Yeah, but I think since I'm okay with cutting it all the way down to my scalp, like I right. don't have to. I won't have to grow it out as long. Right. Yeah. But right, kinda, right, right. I kind of want to try the mermaid moment though. Oh yeah. Yes. You have to. <laughs> You oh really my gosh, do. you can braid it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Fun. Yeah. Um, um, I'm glad you said that, though, Becca, about propagation, because sometimes I just, like, since I have a certain, the majority of my plants are a certain type of plant, I forget that, like, some plants you can't just, like, cut with a node. Like, you actually have to divide the plant. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. And another thing that, like, just popped into my head is snake plants, Sansevieria yeah. dracaena. Yeah. Like, if you have a variegated version of a, of a dracaena slash snake plant, um, and you cut that to do a leaf propagation, it will grow the original version of that plant. It will not grow the that green. variegated leaf. The only way to continue yeah. that lifespan is to divide the plant. That's so. crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of that fun to watch so that happen, weird. though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's cool to see your plants start from nothing again. Because yeah. you just get to see the whole process and you're doing it. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, cactus. Some cactus. Well, you can always propagate by dissecting based on, like, what kind of cactus it is. But also, like, you can chop off like prickly pear you know how they have separate pads but they're growing like pads onto pads you can always just chop it off from there and stick mm -hmm. it in soil and it'll root from the base so i guess yep like cacti are kind of like they'll root pretty much from anywhere yeah and those are so like cacti are so easy to propagate because you mm -hmm. literally just stick them in soil and they will root Mm -hmm. They don't need a lot of water because right. they're holding a lot of water in their bodies. So mm -hmm. literally, I don't even pay attention. I just chop off a piece and stick it back in the pot and like go on with my life because they're just that easy. 
I mean, you can literally cut a cactus in half and it'll grow root. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've done that before. I'm trying to think of like some common house plants that some folks would have. Like peperomia can uh, propagate by just like by a leaf. You could mm-hmm. take a peperomia leaf and cut it in three different spots and put it in soil and all three of them will root and start new plants. Yeah, yep. which is crazy. That it, Yeah, that yeah. is true. Yeah. And by the stem. Like yeah, the also stem by the stem. Well. Um, it's just wild. So basically the moral of the story is there's so many plants out there and so many different types to propagate all of them. And obviously we don't know all of the solutions. Uh, obviously. We don't come here for the facts. We come here for the catch-ups. All right. Let's be honest here. Um, <laughs> I will say that I think the biggest success to propagation, regardless of what you're propagating, is humidity. Like you need to give that propagation humidity. That's going to be your yeah. your main factor for success, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's switch into like Mediums. propagation medium. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you get? What's your preferred method? Lately, it's been for me. It's been sphagnum moss. I like spag because I feel like you can just soak it and not worry about it. Like rotting your plant because it's just it's so airy you know like there's Mm -hmm. it's always going to have air coming to it Mm -hmm. Uh, I think my preferred medium changes because if it's a plant that I'm selling or sharing with someone I usually do soil de la tanks Mm -hmm. featured in one of my uh, Instagram reels that I did a, which it got sassy on that reel, didn't it? it got oh real my gosh! Sassy. It got I saw that sassy. and I was like, "Uh oh!" I yeah, I I it just it hit me in a wrong moment, but mostly because I spent my lunch hour making that reel, and I that's like the first reel I've actually made that I've done in Instagram, and I was like kind of proud of myself. I was like, "Go me!" And then mm-hmm. there was just a comment of like, "Why are you wasting so much water? You could do this. You could do this. You could do this." Which I agree. Like I agree with water conservation. However, that person doesn't have all the facts, and they're just assuming. So yeah. when I replied to them, they were like, "Why would I assume if you had this, this, and this?" And I was like, "Well, you made so many assumptions in your first comment. So why not yeah. make some more? Like, come on. Anyway, yeah." yeah. I had to and give you my should just act like that. an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh um, yeah. But. If I'm selling or sharing with someone, I usually do soil because I don't know what their what their home life's going to be like. When I started LECA and in that, that last plant swap that we went to, Becca, February of 2020, before Pandy, mm-hmm. um, I took a lot of plants that were in LECA to that and some like good plants and nobody wanted them. And I don't know if it was because they were mm-hmm. in LECA and they were like, what am I going to have to do? Um, yeah. But selling or sharing, I usually propagate in soil. If I'm propagating for myself, I'll usually do pawn or leca, because that's what I'm going to grow that in ev- eventually. So Ooh, pawn. keep it Ooh. in there. Um, and then mm-hmm. I also do some spag. So like Becca, your billetier is rooting in spag right now, because like I find philodendrons, I like to do spag. Mm-hmm. So I can watch it. It's e- But like, it's hard to pull all the, the, the moss off the roots. Yeah, yeah, that's what is. I don't like about spag because I'm afraid yeah. I'm gonna also rip the roots because spag looks like roots right, sometimes. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that's probably the only so. downfall. So yeah, if, if you soak the plant in like a, a cup of water, it does help the spag pull off easier, but it's mm-hmm. it's it's it, it's iffy. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, yeah. I've been propagating in cocoa peat, so like that's like the shredded cocoa choir. And I love it. It's my new favorite thing. Ooh. I think it's incredible. I, in like actual industry, I think that they use peat moss a lot of the time to propagate, which is what cocoa choir peat is an alternative for. So it makes sense that it works. But I propagated my philodendron mammii in it and the roots immediately just like took to it so well and it filled up the little four inch pot within Ooh. a couple weeks. I yeah. was shocked. So it drains really fast and it's a nice substrate to like have soil roots. But I used to be big, big girl for uh, water propagation. I never wanted to switch. I was like, there's nothing else. Like I know that there's other methods, but I just like this and it works. And then I started trying spag and when I actually tried using it, it was so helpful and good. And then that's how I feel about cocoa peat now. Um, I just have so much cocoa peat. I just tried it one day and I was like, let's just see what happens. And it 
I have like three other plants in it now. So yeah, I mean, why not if you have it? I mean, I mm-hmm. used to be, I, I feel like I still do propagate in water sometimes, but the problem mm-hmm. with, I guess I, I put Hoya in water propagations because Hoya roots tend to be much hardier than like a philodendron water root. When, you, when you're trying to propagate in water, sometimes it's hard to transfer it over to soil or LECA because the water roots just aren't as like substantial mm-hmm. than propagating in soil or spag. So, but it's nice because you can see the roots, like that success, like just walking past it and being like, ooh, Ooh, you know, and you could see it. Mm -hmm. But then I know a lot of people that propagate in perlite, and I feel like perlite in like a little clear cup is a good way to be able to see your roots too. Or even like you do, Adam, where you put soil in the little tiny, tiny cups, you can see the roots in there too. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit obsessed with like propagating Hoya. Because those little cups yeah. are just so easy. It's just it's just so easy to do. Yeah, with Hoya. It yeah. really is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think I don't know. Water is so passive. You don't really have to think about it. You don't have mm-hmm. to water water because it's water. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why that's like a a go to for certain things. But yeah, I guess trying to expand. I've moved into other things, but. Like Nicole said, water is always something I'll fall back on. Yeah. It's just, you know that you'll get roots, you know, and the transition might take a little bit longer, but the plant is going to be fine. So, and the fun thing about water is it, a plant can live in it forever. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you have like a dark corner of your house, just stick a few stems in in the water, put it on the shelf and it'll probably be fine. When I have water propagations, I tend to like forget to fill up the water jar. <laughs> and then I like, go yeah, and it's like too. bone dry Sometimes. and I was like, son of a. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I was actually, I just came up with a solution because the area behind my TV is so blank, but it's like the wall isn't big enough to like put photos or anything. And I was like, what if I just put propagation tubes right there? Cause there's no light in this yeah. room at all. But I was thinking maybe that would work. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? There's like pretty much no light in here, though. Yeah, there's not. But like, I feel like you could try it on a few. Co- I mean, certain propagations probably wouldn't be as happy, but I don't know. Yeah. I guess I'm interested to see how that would work. But anywho, I what else is there to talk about with propagation? Uh, well, I'm currently air layering a few plants. Oh, Ooh, air layering. Talk yeah, yeah, talk about that. Um. Air layering is where you have... So I'm just going to talk about a specific plant. My white wizard. My philodendron white wizard. Uh, We had a battle with thrips. We're clear of that. But it's very tall. As in, I think it's four feet tall now. Uh, Wow. Maybe five. Four and a half. Um, And the top, like, two feet of it has beautiful foliage. And then the bottom two feet of it is just a bare stick (laughs) with nothing. Uh, Mm -hmm. So it looks awkward. Um and so I decided to air layer it. And what that is, is you basically, you can use a lot of things. You can use cocoa peat. Um, I'm using spag. But you basically wrap damp medium around a node of the plant. And I basically take spag, I moisten it, and then I put it around the node. And then I use saran wrap and cover it up and just like create like a little humidity dome on that node. And that allows the plant to have its original rootstock that is supplying the plant with nutrients while growing roots out of this particular node where I'm going to cut it. And I don't air layer a lot, but why I did it with this plant is because it was such a big plant. And the cutting that I wanted to take was also rather large that if I would have just cut it and stuck it in water, it would have suffered. Like that cutting would have suffered because it takes a while for it to establish a system where it can start pulling in nutrients. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to air layer it so it could already have a root system when I cut it and put it in a new pot. Um, And so I can see the roots through the saran wrap. Like they're already like growing like wild in there. I haven't had to Mm re-moisten it. Um, But that's why I do, uh, if I ever do air layering, that's why I do it is just because either a new leaf is coming out when I'm ready to propagate it and I don't want that new leaf to have damage so I'll air layer it while it's still being uh, nourished by the soil that it's in or 
if the if it's a substantial cutting that I know will, you know, take a hit if I just cut off its nutrient source and trying to root it. Um, mm-hmm. But it works really a, well. It's really easy. I have a question about it. I feel like I've seen a video, but it was a long time ago with someone air layering, but they made like cuts either above or right below the node, like just like little cuts like into the plant and almost mimicked actually cutting it, but not cutting it all the way through. Do you- oh, was it a ficus? Yes. Who took that video? To branch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what that was, but it is, I think it's just a method to get something to branch. Oh, we, we recently talked about this, I feel. This feels very familiar. Did we talk about this last week? Was that, is that know. called notching though? Or is that also called air layering? Oh, that's notching. Maybe. Okay. So is, okay. So that's a different type of method then. But I feel layering. like I've seen them be kind of those terms. Like people have notched a plant, but also called it air layering. Okay. Or air layer propagation, which I mean, you're, you're forcing the plant to grow a new branch. So I guess it could be, mm-hmm. I don't know. So that's mm-hmm. the point of doing that then is is to get it to branch out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to chop it to get it to branch. It'll just branch underneath. Which mm-hmm. you know what's so funny is all of my ficus. <laughs> this is an annual thing. <laughs> Every summer I'm like, oh, I love ficus. They're so fun and beautiful. And then winter comes and I'm like, yeah, I yeah. hate ficus. <laughs> all of them should die. But right now... My ficus elastica, burgundy, the one that was my first house plant, is outside living its best freaking life. Mm-hmm. And it just put out a branch like below where a leaf used to be. And I'm like, okay, so sweetie, like you're not, like what's <laughs> going on here? You're happy now. Now I have to store you all winter and I'm going to feel guilty. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now I might try notching because I guess I'm going to keep my ficus. <laughs> cool. Yay. <laughs> my fiddle leaf fig put out six new leaves this summer Dang. six and they're substantial leaves like they are giant and i don't understand it because i will bring it in and it will have f- probably at least five or six leaves fall off so yeah. it's like it's like this win-lose situation you know yeah yeah oh my gosh all of my cactus outside are so happy Same. oh they're so pretty i love them Same. so much they're flowering they're just living their best life oh my gosh my silver torch put off a little baby and it's, just, it's so oh. cute <laughs> oh i love it um and then oh. there's winter <laughs> okay mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of like props. What do you guys think about heat mats? Do you have them? <gasps> Big fan I of do. heat mats. Big fan. I yeah. haven't I haven't set them up yet, but I do. Yeah. Oh, that's Big a video fan. I have to do. They mm-hmm. make everything dry out a lot faster, but also that's okay because things grow really fast on a heat mat. Yeah. Really? Okay. The medium is warm, so it mimics summer like growth season. Mhm. I would yeah. say that like sent me like Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no. I, I was gonna say, anytime I propagate, I always put it in a, either a glass jar, or a plastic bin. Target has all of these amazing plastic bins right now because back to school, so I grab them yeah, for plants yeah. um, where they have a clear <laughs> lid and a clear. So I think the temperature already increases in there. So if you don't want to like mm-hmm. go out and get a heat mat and you're having it under a grow light, like that's good. Uh, mm-hmm. Nicole and I and Becca all have grow lights that kind of also act as a heat mat too for our shelves. Mm-hmm which is like really nice but it kind of yeah. boosts up the humidity it, yeah very mm-hmm. handy to have and i think plants yeah. really enjoy being the nice little warm hug to encourage some roots yeah yeah, yeah. you just have to make sure that you're watering a little bit more often mm, but other know. than that they're great and they're super like they don't feel hot to the touch or anything um yeah. you know just nice to have mm-hmm. around yeah um well what about some methods of propagating like what you should do well there's one thing you should do like domes yeah oh yeah we could talk about that or like you know the non-eco-friendly ziploc bag solution like that (laughs) 
<laughs> done that. But you can you can reuse the Ziploc bags though. Yeah. You can put yeah. a, a you can put them through the dishwasher. True. Even. Yeah. Well, I always have. Don't follow my instructions because what if it melts in your dishwasher and someone's calling me to replace our dishwasher? <laughs> if it's not that if it's not that hot, it's not going to melt it. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. they have they have the reusable sandwich bags. You can always propagate in those, and I feel like you know light still gets through those, and it's just a little bit of like a filtered light situation. Mm-hmm. Kind of like putting them in a kind of like putting them in a Tupperware bin. Yeah, <laughs> like a prop box. Yeah. Yep. I love using old takeout containers. Like, I became an Uber Eats girl through the pandemic. (laughs) I never was before, ever. And (laughs) sometimes those, the places give, like, Tupperware quality items. I'm like, I'm keeping these. Like, I'm using them to freeze my zucchini right now because they're, like, really nice. (laughs) Like. Chipotle, so, I think, does has really good ones, and so do like yeah. all Chinese restaurants. Yes, Chinese yeah. restaurants, like even like Thai restaurants, they always mm-hmm. have the best little like v- vessels. So they're not vessels, like takeout <laughs> containers, I guess. But you know when the restaurants have like the black bottom, white top, clear white yeah. top ones. Those are the oh, best. I love them. And people actually buy those for meal prep. Did you know yeah. that? Like yeah. I see them I see them for sale at the store for like meal prep stuff. I'm like, this is they're like giving away Tupperware. Yeah. It's just wild. That's exactly what I put my mic and bare sticks in was yeah. the black bottom clear top takeout container. I think it came with a pizza order for garlic bread. And Yeah. Now you have a salad. Yeah. Yeah. I had so Mike many. All, I mean, all of those were wet sticks when I put them in there, and they like pretty much all of them started growing a yeah. new plant. So, oh, so that's cool. something good to talk about. Like the the clear vessels versus like the dark vessels. I heard, and I don't know how true it is, but I did hear from doing an old video that it's always better to put your cuttings, like if you're going to water propagate, to put it in like a darker vessel. So something that's opaque or like, you know, obviously not see-through clear. One, if it's see-through clear, it tends to get moldy, right? Algae sometimes. Or algae, not moldy algae. Um, But two, like when you think about it, whether you're growing plants in, you know, pond, leka, soil, the roots are kept like underground i'm doing air quotes and like in the dark so i feel like they're probably going to be thicker and healthier if they're grown in a vessel that's darker rather than lighter so maybe that's why those tupperware things are so great yeah yeah i love them they're the best yeah when i started propagating especially like wet sticks in closed containers I, I used to be super against wet sticks. Let me be honest. I would really, if you're not familiar with what a wet stick is. Okay, I was just going to say also, we should probably define it. Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what it was until literally a few months ago. So, yeah. Yeah. So, it's basically a stem that has one or multiple nodes on it, no leaves. And mm-hmm. it. I feel like the craze for wet sticks started with Monstera, like, Deliciosa oh. Albos. Like, yeah. that was really what got it all started. Mm-hmm. because sellers were like, oh, I have this stick that is viable, but there's no leaves on it, so what do I do with it? Oh, let me throw it on the internet for like 50 bucks and see if I can get right. money for it. And then now people are paying hundreds for them. So I was really against wet sticks because I just saw people being exploited because they didn't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. And they were rotting, like they just did it all wrong. Like so many people were super like unfamiliar with how to grow from them. So then I decided to try it and I was able to revive one of my most prized plants that turned into a wet stick. Like I definitely would have thrown it away if I didn't know about this. So like I'm very thankful for all the people who came before me (laughs) and learned (laughs) how to do this and shared their knowledge. So if you are going to propagate a wet stick, like if your plant loses all of its roots, loses all of its leaves, but the stem is still firm, there are nodes on it, like that the nodes just look like notches or maybe there's like an aerial root where there used to be an aerial root perhaps if it rotted you can just lay that down in a bed of sphagnum moss usually or perlite sorry i just i can't stop the music from always just like coming into my head 
Yes. It's okay. <laughs> lay it down. I love um, it. But yeah, like lay it down in a bed of a medium. Roses. Roses. Yes. Um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then cover it with a clear top container. And you should, should, keyword being should, get <laughs> some roots and eventually some leaves. And it's going to take a really long time. <laughs> but you'll yeah. feel yeah. so successful when it does. Yeah. 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 My, truly. I had a elbow wet stick and it's now three leaves. And mm-hmm. it's so cute. Doesn't mm-hmm. have a ton of variegation, but we don't need to talk about that. It's still cute. Yeah. And yeah. it's growing. I think that, and this is a, one of those situations too, like where you can just find hacks because you could do it in like a plastic nursery pot filled with sphagnum moss and then put it in a Ziploc bag. Yep. Mm-hmm. Or take a takeout container obviously works like a charm. Like yeah. so good. But yeah. Yeah. Humidity. Yep. You just have to boost up that humidity. Go yeah. Keep it mm-hmm. nice and yeah. moist. Moist. In, a, in like the <laughs> most ideal environment for a wet stick would be on top of a heat mat in a bed of roses. Just kidding. <laughs> in, a, in a bed of medium, insert medium, with a grow light. Yeah. Yes. I think that is like surefire way to get some good results. That's what I did with my mammy eye. And yep. you lay it on its side as well. Mm-hmm. Lay them on their side. Don't dig them in at all. Just lay them on their sides. The roots will find a way. Yeah. And the so, leaves will find a way. They'll just... Yeah, the leaves will find a way. I am converted. I am a converted wet stick hater. I'll look Good. at it. In the, the <laughs> converted wet stick hater. Um, when I was, <laughs> I was like kind That's of. That's a t-shirt. I was <laughs> dabbling with experimenting on. I've noticed a lot of my Hoya when when they bent down, like if if it was a vine going straight up and I bent it down to wrap it around a trellis, it would put out new growth instead of like cutting it. Mm. And uh, someone turned me on to the form like gravitropism, and it's there's certain like cells that are in plants and in leaves and roots in general, and these cells kind of direct the plant on which way to grow. So, like, that's why you, you find your plants, like, the roots figure it out. The cells yeah. the, the cells and the roots will shy away from, from light, so when they see light, they, they go away from it and they go down, whereas the cells in some of the leaves are found on the underside. There's a whole, like, bunch of things involved in it, but I thought it was pretty neat to, like... That's cool. Plants are just so cool. Yeah, yeah, they really are. Yeah. They really are. It's a whole world, isn't it? <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a whole world. A whole new Ooh. world. All right, you guys. I think that we have covered pretty much everything there is to say about propagation. Oh, wait. Sanitize your scissors or your knife or your scalpel oh. or your... Clean. Yeah, sanitize it. A little bit of alcohol, a little bit of water, Dunzo. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because you don't want to be spreading that plant disease. You don't want to give your whole collection thrips. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Well, I think that covers everything you'd ever want to know about propagation. So if you have any additional wisdom, tips, fun anecdotes to share, you can head over to our Instagram. We post... Uh, a feed post you know for every episode for us to have a little chat on so if you want to how how they say get in the comment section of this podcast episode you can head over to our instagram (laughs) pot it together and yeah that's that's all folks anyway yeah yeah uh oh i guess i should (laughs) i haven't led an episode in so long i'm just like so what's next on the list Okay, if you would like to follow us personally on Instagram, you can find Nicole, My Clean Leaves, Adam, Not Dude, K N O T, and me, De La Plants. And Yay. that that really should be all, folks. Oh, we also have a YouTube channel, which we need to make a video for. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that notification come up, and I was like, uh, <laughs> delete. We haven't done this. Control Alt Delete. Control or delete. Uh, snooze. <laughs> we'll, we'll snooze that one. Anyway, we have a YouTube <laughs> channel if you're interested in hanging out with us on video. We've done a few. And we would love to we have you do, over there. We should do prop box tours or what, like, current propping. Oh, that'll be fun. 
Okay, okay, that's the, that's the video. Yeah, we need to put out some more YouTube videos because people like our faces. At least that's what people blame tell them. us. <laughs> now that we're all hair twins, <laughs> yeah. we have to. Yeah. We should do like a trivia, like take a photo of the back of all of our heads and be like, who's who? <laughs> <laughs> How well do you know our heads? <laughs> that would all be right. kind of fun. Neither of you sound excited, but I think that'd be fun. Well, I just thought okay, well, I'm going to have to straighten my hair because yeah. I feel like that gives it away. Oh, so I was thinking about doing the curly. Mask. Oh yeah, Trader Joe's has one that I really like. Though well, it's a deep conditioner; it's not a hair mask, but I like it. it smells like coconuts. Ooh. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about doing the curly girl method on my hair because my hair used to be really wavy, and that's not anymore. I'm uh, sure it's not at all. Yeah, there's no wave in my hair at all, and I'm like, wait a minute. When I was younger, I used to have little ringlets. Like when I was like but you 15. Never, you never straighten your hair. You never use heat, right? No, hardly ever. Wow. They always say if your like little back hairs, like where your neck is, if those have like ringlets, then you have curly hair. You just need to take care of it. Yeah. Okay. See, I get the little ringlets. If I'm sweating a lot, yeah. I'll get ringlets. Then you do. It's not like, I don't know. I'm not going to be, okay. It's a big thing on TikTok when people are like, I have curly hair and the person has like wavy hair and everybody in the curly community gets like so pissed off. <laughs> I'm not trying to trigger anybody. I'm not saying I have curly hair. I just, I know that I used to have wavy hair and mm -hmm. now it's pinned straight. And I'm like, hold on a second. Oh. No, no, no. This isn't, this is not my hair. Who is this? <laughs> Whose hair is this? It's not mine. <laughs> anyway. So I think I'm going to try the curly girl method and see if there's any natural wave in my hair anymore. Maybe I can yeah. reintroduce it. Do but. It. Yeah. Do it, well. film it, post it on your other channel. Yeah. Wash and plop. Wash channel. and plop. Wash and plop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but like also, what if I do the whole method and my hair doesn't do anything? Then I've just wasted like a hundred bucks on products. Uh, well, I'll, I, mean, I can buy them from you. Okay, I'll give them to you, Adam, if they don't work out. Because I have curly hair. Because you, right you do have curly hair. <laughs> I don't know how to take care of it, though. <laughs> you would for sure have like full ringlets. Like for sure yeah. yeah but then i always like play with it so whenever i do do the scrunch with gel and it has like mm -hmm. ringlets then i'm always doing this and then they're always just like breaking apart apparently you just I can't touch like your hair when you get the ringlets yeah you really you have to leave it alone and you d definitely don't brush it but i feel like we might have the same kind of hair yeah adam because when i get out of the shower it's like super curly yeah yeah did you straighten your hair today what'd you do yeah i just did like some some like curls in the yeah i did i used my flat iron and just did like some waves in it yeah because otherwise it's frizzy it's like frizzy curly you know yeah, yeah. i feel you <laughs> Ooh, youtube video all three of us doing the curly girl method oh. <laughs> let's do it <laughs> the curly Completely person unrelated. method <laughs> The curly, yeah, the curly girl. Yeah, curly human. <laughs> curly human That's method. true, actually. I never thought about that because it's not just not just girls not that just have curly girls. hair, is it? Oh. Oh, dear. All righty. Well, we will talk to you guys later. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. That was the most Midwest thing I've ever done. <laughs> well. Uh, well. Oh, my gosh. I saw this well. meme on this. Uh, she's from Wisconsin, which I don't. I don't consider Wisconsin Midwest. I think that's like Northern, but I think they consider themselves Midwest. Yeah, and it do. was like, how do you let a Midwesterner know you're like, you want them to leave? And well. it said, well, slap, slap your legs really hard, stand up and go, well, <laughs> <laughs> and they will nice. know the code. They <laughs> yeah. will know the code that it's time to go. And I've seen Daniel do that so many times. I'm like, wow, this is so true. I'm yeah. like thinking back. I'm like, he does that all the time. <laughs> So, and then I just did it. So, well, well, well <laughs> on that note, folks, <laughs> Becky's got to go get on her tractor. Uh, Don't do that. Oh, I, yes, you do. You do. <laughs> you do. Adam just said, yes, you do. I do. <laughs> it's, everyone does it. Like, you all do it. Like, I do. I, I won't lie. I do. You do a lot of Midwest things, Daniel. She I said, do. you all do it. I'll she just grouped it. us. <laughs> Anyway, okay. Well, we love you guys. We will catch you in the next episode. Bye. 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 
Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off Movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com.